Okay, tonight we have a unique speaker, a scholar who will educate us on a topic most of us only know on the surface. Dr. Paul Gregory is from Hoover Institution. He received his PhD from Harvard University in Economics. Dr. Gregory is the author and co-author of 12 books and many articles on economic history, the Soviet economy, transition economics, comparative economics, and economic demography, including recently released Politics, Murder, and Love in Stalin's Kremlin, Kremlin the story of Nikolai Burkheim and Anna Lorena. And that's for sale over here after he talks, so uh, you, get, you get an autographed copy. Dr. Gregory also served on the editorial board of the seven-volume Gulag documentary series entitled The History of the Stalin Gulag, published jointly by the Hoover Institution and the Russian Archival Service. Dr. Gregory holds an endowed professorship in the Department of Economics at the University of Houston in Texas and is a research professor at the German Institute for Economic Research in Berlin. Paul Gregory blogs at paulgregorysblog.blogspot.com. So he'd like you to come and visit and see some of the stuff he puts out. He also has a weekly column entitled, uh -oh. this is later notes I wrote too small. <laughs> I still can't write it. <laughs> Econ World at Forbes.com, so he, he writes for Forbes. And uh, his topic is Stalin and the Dictator's Playbook, Interpreting Modern Russia, China, and the Arab Spring. So let's give a warm Silicon Valley welcome to Dr. Paul Gregory. Of the 
individuals who are involved. So that's the reason why I'm telling this story in this book. It's a very interesting love story. Uh, I hope you will be able to read it. Uh, but I think also this story tells you a lot about dictatorship. Uh, this was the probably at least one of the world's cruelest dictatorship. It was one that was based on principles of Marxism and socialism. It was the world's first great experiment in an administratively planned economy. It very well illustrates what happens when you eliminate the market. Because when you eliminate the market, you have to substitute something for it. And what you substitute is political power. And the political power that Stalin brought to bear uh, was as brutal or more brutal than any other regime. Uh, I claim Stalin wrote the handbook for dictators. And one proof I have of this is that Saddam Hussein was an avid student of Stalin's. He even traveled to Russia and visited all of Stalin's summer homes. Uh, so um, here you have one student. Uh, Stalin uh, exported his brand of communism to China. China, beginning in 1978-79, began to uh, reform in a very serious fashion its economy, but it still has a one-party dictatorship. And that is going to be the big issue of the next 40, 50 years, whether China will democratize. Uh, I would like to say a few words about the book. And, well, here is my title. Uh, these are my characters. Uh, this is the way they looked when they first met. Thank you. 
including all the photographs. So this is one of the few original photographs that uh, survives and is in the Hoover Institution, and you can see it's not in very good shape. Uh, the photographs and the papers have disappeared forever, but they are hidden somewhere in Moscow. So it will be quite exciting when and if we, we find them. Uh, just to show you the progression in the book, which I'm not going to talk about, um, I'd like you to guess her age. 17. 14. Uh, so he is 26 years older. So if you add the two, 26 plus 14, it's uh, what is it, 40. He's 40. Uh, you can see he was a very popular figure, very popular among artists. He was the one who, had he won the power struggle, would have taken the Soviet Union in a quite different direction. If he had won, which I claim was not possible, because in this type of regime, the cruelest man wins. But had he miraculously won, Russia would have become much like a social democratic uh, regime in Europe today. So it's rather striking and important that he didn't win, but in the book I claim he, he had very little chance anyway. But you can see uh, Anna has become a beauty. Uh, Bukharin married twice. May have married three times, because in those days they really didn't bother to register uh, marriages. Uh, the third woman was actually a spy put in his bed by Stalin, who kept pretty good track of him. He finally figured out that she was a spy and dumped her. And that's when he and Anna, she is now 18, uh, became serious about each other. Notably, they, their real love story began uh, after he had lost the power struggle. So by 1929, he had lost. And I think these photographs are from 1929. Here they are at the end. Uh, you can see how much he has aged. I think Honor is here 20, 21. Uh, he is uh, 47, 21 plus whatever, 46. He, this is on the eve of his arrest, which occurred in February 1937. The 37. He was the um, prime uh, exhibit at Stalin's last Moscow show trial of March 1938. So this would be right before his arrest. In those days, if you were the wife of a minor or major political figure when your husband was arrested and shot because none of the high level of party officials who were arrested were allowed to live. There were a few exceptions. But your husband was shot and you were labeled what was called a chisir, which is an abbreviation for a family member of a traitor of the fatherland. So she is a chassir. And this is Anna around 1945, uh, after spending a rather, uh, uh, spending 20 years in the, well, it would be 56. This is her 56, after 10 years in the gulag and 10 years in exile. So let's compare the two. I thought maybe this is a distortion, you know, because these are computer generated. But that's how she looks. She 